Hello, everybody. This is Octavia, and I'm really happy to be doing a clubhouse today. And I, um, this topic that we're talking about today is right in the intersection of how relationships impact your, your business and your business productivity. And so I'm, um, I'm really excited about this topic because I've noticed in my own life, how much relationships support or take away from my business success and my business productivity. And I didn't understand that for the longest time until I took my neuroscience coaching training. And then what happened was I understood the neuroscience behind it. And I recognized why I was losing a lot of time and productivity with these relationships. And it, and it could be all different kinds of relationships. Really what I wanna focus on in this particular clubhouse room in this club is on the, the like romantic and love relationships. But you know maybe in the future, we'll get into some of the other types of relationships. It's those close relationships with us, whether we're single, whether we have a partner at home, and we, as entrepreneurs, as business people, we're really focused on our career. And so we get really, really dedicated and very committed to, uh, to our work. And sometimes our relationships, are the people who are closest to us notice that. And sometimes they notice it in some grumpy kind of ways, <laughs> some ways that they, they aren't really, they're not so very happy that we are spending so much time with our businesses. And, and yet for us, it's a self-expression, it's a passion, it's part of our self-identity. We're creating something, we're really wanting to be something more and bigger and better and greater than what we, what we um, have been. And maybe we had a career in corporate world where our careers were so defined by the context that we were in, that we didn't really get to do work the way we wanted to. We didn't get to have the kind of impact that we wanted to have. And so this is a, you know, this is a conundrum for those of us who are starting our own businesses, especially because of the emotional energy it takes, the intensity, the focus, uh, the difficulty switching gears, the, uh, sometimes we have personal challenges inside us that will impact our ability to be productive, which then makes tasks take much longer. Uh, they can take much longer to accomplish. And then our day slides into our evening and our sweetie's sitting there waiting for us. Maybe, maybe they've got dinner ready. Maybe, you know, they're ready for us. Maybe they already worked a full work day and they're ready for us to switch gears and spend time with them. And so this is, this is a real balance and a challenge with balancing between relationships and business. And so I'm Octavia, I'm an intuitive relationship strategist for ambitious entrepreneurs and business people. I work a lot with men because men have a little bit more challenge with, with finding that balance. Uh, men really, really identify with their work and, and the women who are Mm, let's say very career oriented, we oftentimes adapt a masculine approach. So that and working and being focused and being really linear and goal oriented is, is kind of a masculine trait anyway. And, and so when we're in our masculine career business role, whether we're feminine or of course men, uh, these things can have a big impact on the relationships we have in our lives. So that's our topic for today, talking about uh, when relationships are not so good for business. And so this is the balancing act that we as entrepreneurs are attempting to forge. And when we have really good relationships at home and our partners respect what we're accomplishing, they can hold space and they can be really supportive and they can help us. You know, the entrepreneurs have such a roller coaster ride, but they can be supportive and emotionally on board with what we're trying to achieve and be our biggest cheerleaders. 
And, and so they're working too, really, in our business in this particular way. And so when they are, um, when people are, um, when we're working on our business and we have a relationship at home and they're playing this role of cheerleader, us as entrepreneurs, that's really, really helpful for us, of course. And most of the time when we've got a good relationship at home, we've got some really good like brain chemistry going on with that. And the good brain chemistry comes from the love and the comfort and all of the, the good hormones that flow when we're getting enough touch and we're getting enough care and love from our partnership, that all brings us into a more effective part of our brain during the workday. And as long as we are not defeating it and overriding it with, you know, being a stress monger uh, and being really frustrated about our business or, you know, really just wallowing in, you know, any time that we're feeling a failure or something like that, as long as we capitalize and allow the good feelings from the relationship, it can flow over into a greater focus and productivity in our work. And uh, that gets, and that's what I'm talking about, a stable relationship that's lasted a while. This is the benefit that that kind of relationship can have, all these benefits that a relationship like that has for an entrepreneur or somebody who's really, really, you know, climbing the ladder, an ambitious person. And, you know, and then of course, we've got to be aware that when our partner is also kind of rooting for us and doing a little bit of this supportive work, they, you know, they can get tired too. You know, they want something back and they, they want to spend time with us. They want us to make space for them to spend time with them. And so this is the intersection that I like to work in and that I like to talk with people about. And oftentimes I work with men because Sometimes if, if they're in a relationship with a woman, the woman can be a little confusing. And what I know from the neuroscience training that I've gotten, men's minds are literally, they're structured differently. And because of that, men think differently, operate differently. And I think this has come to be more and more accepted now in our world. Uh, gosh, when I first heard about it, uh, let's say 15 or 20 years ago, there was some really new science about, and I think there was an article in Psychology Today, when they first started discovering that the brains had differences. And you got to remember, this was in the era of feminism, and a lot of backlash came out towards those scientists and saying, no, 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 because Back then, we saw differences as inequality, right? Now, thank goodness the world has evolved so much more, and we can see differences in the variety of diversity that's really beneficial to everybody. And differences are not such a dirty word anymore. But back then, it was really just a it was kind of a dirty word <laughs> to say that there were differences between the men and women's brains implied to society at that time that that one or the other was superior. Um, and, and that's interesting too, because it's really the men who have uh, this kind of a hierarchy and in male society and the way boys are raised, there's a one up and a one down. And there's always like a a fighting order, you know, every man seems to understand where he is in relative power position to another man. And so the whole thing about interpreting differences as inequality was a probably a masculine <laughs> idea in the first place. Um, so what I want to go here, go towards next is these differences in the brain between men and women are well, they're healthy differences, but they can be really very, very confusing and they can be really hard on relationships. So especially if men were not raised with sisters or the family had a culture of masculinity uh, or the masculine way of doing things was 
was more predominant in the family, for example, than, uh, than the way the sister saw it or the way the mother thought. You know, there's all different kinds of family cultures out there, especially dysfunctional family cultures, which are really quite common with entrepreneurs. And so if these men had very little exposure to women and the way women think differently, um, and you know, there's a lot of messages from society that you know, we're overcoming now, but for the longest, longest time, there were a lot of messages in society and there's still cultures where there's a, you know, I live in Mexico, so there's a predominance of, of machismo. Um, and in these kinds of settings in family cultures, there could be a, an idea that there's a, you know, the women's way of thinking is not of great interest to the men and the men get to say, have the say. So in those types of families, imagine a more modern man growing up in a family like that, who believes in the equality of women, but didn't really get a lot of education about how women think or behave or act or what's this emotional thing that women have i didn't get a lot of you know education about that emotional side of women i don't know how to interact with them and so a lot of even men that really do want to have great relationships and really do want to understand women might feel very confused by women. And that's natural, you know, that happens. And, and so that's why I like to help these men understand the differences between the brains and literally how that can come into a relationship conversation, how that can really come into an argument, how can, how things can turn into arguments so quickly. And then, you know, especially if they happen in really bad timing, like in the morning, uh, maybe you're not even awake yet and somehow or other you've already gotten in a fight and you're trying to get to work and you are less productive at work because you got an argument this morning. Your mind is, is churning about what happened there. Like I didn't have any intention for the conversation to go in that direction. Somehow I pissed her off. I have no idea what happened. And you get to work and now, men are really good at compartmentalizing stuff like that. And they just, you know, which I have a lot of admiration. I've actually even attempted to develop that skill in myself of compartmentalizing and being able to be more um, focused. Okay, I'm going to set that argument aside. We're going to have it later. We'll figure it out later. You know, however, I still know that even with compartmentalization that men are so good at, there is a, uh, there's still a toll that it takes kind of in the background of your brain, which keeps you from being all in, 100% in to the tasks you're doing at your business, to the work that you're doing. And, and I theorize, and I've seen this with my clients, that it's, it's taking a toll on how well they can show up as a leader as a strong decision maker in their business. And when, when we're entrepreneurs, it's pretty much all in all day long, every day. We've really got to keep our focus. We've really got to keep our productivity up really, really high. And when we have this little stuff going on in the background about what happened this morning, what kind of argument happened, how did I fix that? Uh, you know, men are such problem solvers, right? And when they feel confused in the relationship, it can be, it just takes a toll. There's part of them trying to figure out the answer to that problem so they can keep their relationship happy. I mean, God bless men, good hearted men want to keep the relationship happy. They want to understand how to navigate the woman's emotions and to feel good with each other. And, and to have that support at home for their career. And, and so there's a part of them that's just in the back, just figuring, trying to figure stuff out. And then it could just be 10%. It could be 15%, 20%. Doesn't sound like much, but when you need all of your edge, when you need 100% of your leadership edge, then you can 
it really starts to take a toll, especially if it's a recurring theme where the relationship is rocky and there's a lot of problems and challenges to solve there, you know, communication challenges and things like that. So if that's happening, then the entrepreneur or the businessman is not all the way in. And if he's ambitious, he's going to feel that. He's going to know that. He's going to know, I'm tired. I, I somehow, I'm just swirling around in analysis paralysis while I'm trying to make a decision. I'm not totally sure how this decision is going to be, like if I'm making the best decision here, if I'm taking enough factors into account if I'm filtering out the past decisions that play into this decision I'm about to make. And that's the edge that I'm talking about. You know, we're all pretty good at making decisions on the fly. We're pretty good at making decisions that don't have a huge impact or a huge ripple effect. But, you know, when we've really got to be tight, delegating, communicating a task effectively to another person, on the team who maybe were new at working with them or they are new at this particular type of task. We've got to be very careful to delegate so they can get the work done without wasting time, without building extra hours, without slipping the deadline. And, and we've got to delegate really carefully and precisely. So these are the types of situations I'm talking about where you need that extra 10%, 15%, 20% that's just tied up somewhere else. As much as you are good at compartmentalizing, some of your energy is tied up somewhere else. And so it comes to bear on that particular decision. And so these are some of the examples. And, and so I promised, I, I think I'm taking a little time to get around to it. What, what do we do when we're having these kinds of relationship situations at home that are a conundrum, a problem that's really challenging to solve. And then it's starting to steal some of your energy and emotional vibrancy. You're, you're starting to steal your leadership edge at work. And, and this edge can show up in a lot of other places. Sales calls are particularly where you need to be like, woo, you know, a hundred percent right then and there. So uh, what do we do in these situations? Well, I've got a, a three-step protocol that I recommend. And, and the first thing is just to get in your body and I'm really just, oh, wow. I mean, recognize the tension is kind of increasing. Recognize that this uh, conversation is getting out of hand and take some deep breaths into your body because a lot of times, um, especially now, this is something you might not think about, but when women get upset, their tone of voice goes up, you know, um, <laughs> this is how little children get attention, especially babies, they cry. And when the, that crying sound is a high pitched sound, that brings us to full attention. What, what we need to do, what, what's got, how do I you know, fix this? Like the alarm bells go off, right? And, and I think there might be something with when women's voices go into a higher, they start talking really like, you know, they get into a higher octave like that. I think it's, it creates some stress for the man that's hearing it. Women will talk faster, they'll talk at a higher pitch and, it, and it's stressful. Um, you know, and we want to diffuse that situation. But if you're about to walk out the door to go to work and you don't have time to have this conversation right here at the moment, what do you do? So the first thing I suggest is recognize, you know, all your, be alert. This, this conversation is not going to resolve quickly. And this is not about, I got to take the trash out right now. This is about some kind of pattern, a long-term discussion we need to have. And now is not the time. As a man and, and as a person who leads, because this could happen to a woman with her, with her man at home too. He you know, picks a fight with her. This happened to me <laughs> sometimes right before I go to work and some of my toxic relationships that I had in the background. And take a deep breath is the first thing I would recommend. 
identify the situation and take a deep breath and get in your body because from your body, you can lead and you can be more commanding. You can make sure that whatever you need to say, because you're about to set a boundary, right? Um, you're, it's going to get hurt. When you speak from inside your body and you can even pull yourself back, sometimes when we get in an argument, we just, we kind of like get engaged. We want to push forward towards the other person. And that posturing, that physical body language is another thing that can just spin up the argument instead of diffusing it and taking it down. So get in your body first. And then that also gives you a chance to be a little more respectful. I recognize the situation that's happening here. I recognize that this is step two. I appreciate you bringing this to my attention. I understand it's very, very important to you. And I need to go. I need to focus on my work right now. But I want you to know that I have heard you. And I love and appreciate you, even though this is a very tense moment right now. So my understanding is that we need to have a discussion about this. And now is not a good time for both of us to have that discussion. One of us has to go and do something else. And so if you are speaking like this and you notice my tone of voice is very, it's matter of fact, but it's respectful. I'm saying things that are respecting the other person. So this should diffuse the situation a little bit because now from neuroscience, they feel like you're hearing them. Mirror neurons are this ricochet. Have you ever felt like the conversation is ricocheting and sometimes it's going back and forth and scaling up like that? Well, that's part of the mirror neurons because we're very social creatures and we need to know whether we're being gotten by somebody else or not. And so these mirror neurons, it, you're calming that other person down by letting them know that you know what they've got to say is important, that they're important to you. And now if your relationship's really sliding down the rocks, I get that you might even, I would suggest to still use this process because if your relationship is sliding down the rocks and you're about to, you're considering breaking up, you can minimize some of the losses, but that's a whole different other topic. We'll cover another time. So now you are setting boundaries with them and you're deferring the conversation to later and setting a very specific time and place and moment. And you're making a promise and a commitment to that person that this topic will get dealt with. And so in the third, in the third step, is to know that that is handled. So this is kind of a compartmentalized compartmentalization technique, knowing that the situation kind of got handled. Now I want you as a man to recognize that an action has been taken. When men are dressed with other women, with women's emotions and we get that they're upset, men process their emotions much quicker than women. And to the point where women think men don't even have emotions. And this is the difference in the brain structure. Men need to take action on emotions and their brain goes almost immediately. They fly through the emotions and they wanna take action. And so when the woman's upset, the tendency for the man is to want to take action right in that moment, but he's gotta to get to work. So this is a self-leadership maneuver is to understand, I just took action. I told her that we are gonna have this conversation later and I took action. Because I took action, I can calm myself down and I have to regulate my, a lot of times the, the action is inspired by you know, anger or frustration or one of these types of emotions. You might have to talk to yourself and say, okay, no, I took, hey, anger, hey, frustration, I took action. And now I'm going to bring myself back into a place of peace and calm. And, and I'm going to go on about my work day. So this is a topic that could go on. There's a lot of depth here. 
And I'm going to bring this to a graceful conclusion, but let me review the three steps. First, you're going to recognize and calm and get in your body. You're going to recognize, oh, this is starting to spin up and you're going to calm your body down. The second step is to acknowledge the other person and to make an appointment, a promise that this topic is going to get handled and that will help them feel calmer. And then the third step is to ad address and identify your own feelings and your own frustrations and, and tell yourself, I took action. I can, I can set this aside. We've got a time and a date where we are going to address this topic in a very peaceable, respectful way. We're going to take responsibility and we're going to take this topic on and address it. And we're going to solve it together as a couple. And now I'm going to go on about my way to work. And this will prevent the argument from impacting your productivity as much at work. And I'm not going to say that it's 100% solved. And however, with what I expressed earlier about your leadership edge, getting ready to be, you know, blurred out and dulled down by a, a heated argument happening right before work. So now you have calmed that down, you've got a plan, and that should give you some percentage points of your leadership back as you get back to work. So I hope this has been helpful for you today. I really appreciate you being here with me. And I wish you, this is Octavia Brooks, strategic relationship, intuitive relationship strategist for ambitious people and ambitious entrepreneurs. And my specialty is helping people to handle these relationship challenges and find a really good healthy balance between their relationship and their work. So they can be productive and have time for that relationship, give that relationship the honor and due that it needs so that you can have the support at home that helps you be more productive at work. So you can have the productivity at work that gives you the time back. So you can be supportive back to your partner. So you've got this really nice fluid balance in a healthy, harmonious relationship and entrepreneur lifestyle and business success. That's what I like to work on with people. So I really enjoy spending this time with you. And uh, reach out to me in a direct message if you want to talk about any of this further and have a fantastic rest of your day.